How do you get from this to this? I started learning Live 2D in late November 2022. How the hell am I qualified to be making this series? Because I lived it. There are simple concepts that I couldn't find information for, concepts that now feel easy, but I needed to be explained to me like I was five. That's where you come in. Once you're used to a new activity, it's easy to forget the small things that felt like mountains when you first started. I want to share what I've learned from my own experience and prepare you for success. I want this to not only help beginners, but also fill holes of knowledge for the more experienced. Today, I'm going to give you a quick and dirty breakdown of what to expect with the series and help you to get to know Live2D. Live2D Cubism is a powerful modeling program that lets you dynamically animate 2D illustrations. Developed in 2008 by Japanese company Live2D Co. Limited, Live2D became popular internationally in large part due to the sudden rise of VTubers. There are a wide range of applications that can utilize Live 2D products, including games, animation, streaming, and ads. There are currently two versions, free and pro. A comparison chart is linked in the description. For those who want to taste a pro but don't want to commit yet to the subscription, there's a 42-day free trial you can activate, allowing you temporary access to all the features. One of the most attractive things about the live to do community is how eager people are to lift each other up. Any knowledge they learn, they want to share with others. New tools are created and developed through teamwork. For much of the English speaking community, most congregate on Twitter and Discord. One important thing to remember is that there's no one way to reach a desired result. There's a lot of freedom and that may seem overwhelming at first. Imagine if you asked three different artists how they draw hair, they would each provide you with their own technique. Remember to be curious and respectfully ask questions if there's something that you don't understand. Another important thing to remember while beginning your live 2D journey is to stay open-minded in regards to your learning curve to prevent feeling too frustrated. You don't want to get burnt out trying to recreate the amazing and complex effects you've seen on more advanced rigs. I understand. I found my eagerness to improve became an obstacle. I was trying to sprint before I could walk. <gasps> Rome wasn't built in a day. Trial and error is the bread and butter of the game. Not only do you learn more of what the program was capable of, you develop a deeper understanding of why certain things are done the way they are. It's not unlike solving a puzzle once you know the rules. Everyone learns differently and at different speeds. Be kind to yourself. There are four basic elements that you need to know intimately some before you even enter the program. PSD, Art Mesh, Deformer, and Parameter. I will break down your production workflow and fundamental functions. Let's go. PSD, which stands for Photoshop Document, is home to the layers that give your model its appearance, also known as texture. It's essential that every important or unique element is on its own layer. Cutting is when art is separated in strategic ways in order to assemble the model. Naming conventions are very important. It will help you stay organized throughout the whole lengthy and nuanced process of making your VTuber model. PSD and Live2D, while very compatible, have some significant differences in how they treat certain functions. While Photoshop enables a great many layer effects, Live2D only recognizes add, glow, and multiply blending modes. Additionally, Live2D only accepts PSDs exported from Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint due to the way other programs export PSDs. We'll get into greater detail on the nuances of PSDs later during the PSD Spotlight video. By opening or dragging your PSD to Live2D, you import the file into the program, where the layers are now referred to as parts. Much like Photoshop, the order of the parts matter and follow the same hierarchy. There are exceptions to this, but they are necessary to address at this state. By literally connecting the dots, you create polygons, and those polygons are largely made up of triangles. If you're familiar with how 3D meshing works, it's a very similar concept with each triangle being a plane or facet. By applying a mesh over your texture, you give it the ability to be manipulated, creating the illusion of depth. 
The image assigned to the mesh is now referred to as the art mesh. Meshes can be copied and pasted, not just when they're the same project, but throughout multiple. Work smarter, not harder. Learning and developing efficient shortcuts can be really easier workflow. It's worth exploring the keyboard shortcuts window to better understand your options. So how does one edit the art mesh? That's where deformers come in. Both deformer types have different strengths, so they're both used in different instances. The warp deformer is the more creative potential of the two and is what gives your model depth. It can be manipulated in various ways with different levels of detail. More on that in the future. The rotation deformer does just that, rotates. It's a simple job, but someone has to do it. The rotation deformer works best for things like joints or assisting physics. It also helps with moving rigged elements without messing up the pre-existing parameters. Each element placed on the canvas, such as arc mesh or deformer, is called an object. In Live 2D, deformers work in hierarchies. It's referred to as a parent-child relationship within the program, but is also comparable to a royalty or corporate management system. This can be overwhelming, but we'll learn more about the laws of the land in a future tutorial. So how are parts and deformers different? Remember how I said parts are like layers in Photoshop? The same rule applies here for deformers in the deformer window. If you have the bangs above the mid hair above the back hair, that's how it appears. How does this relate to deformer hierarchies in the deformer window? That is mwah, the beauty of the system. With deformers, you can keep several groupings of hair under one deformer, even if they're separated by many parts within the parts palette section. Last but not least are parameters, also known as params. They act as a way to record how an object changes, moves, and appears. Params record using keyforms. You can only edit your art mesh and deformers if you're on a keyform. Imagine your params as a train. When you make a new keyform on a param, you get a window like this. The default keyform is very important. Think of it as a home base. You can only change who is on or off at the stations, not in between, unless you add another station or keyform. If your keyform is empty, it's just telling you that a station can be put there, but unless it's filled, the station does not exist. Let's unpack that. Keyforms can come in two states, empty and occupied. If you want to record a change, the keyform must be green, specifically green with a red outline which means it's currently being selected. If you right-click the keyform, you can snap to it easily. This is a very common roadblock if you're not paying attention. I speak from experience. Please note, parameters are there to show the limits of a change, from minimum to maximum. This is not where you try and simulate physics. Parameters say you can go as far as here and here and here. Things like physics and animations are the instructions of how the params will be expressed. After you've made your parameters, you've enabled physics and animations to know what resources they can work with. Without your params, you have no resources. To use another analogy for the process as a whole, if Live 2D is the kitchen, your model is the featured dish of the day, and you are the owner of the restaurant. The parts are the ingredients, the art mesh are the pots and pans, the containers you cook with, the parameters are recipes guiding you on how much to put where, and deformers are the cooks, the things putting the creation into action. Finally, think of a selected keyform as deciding what's on the menu. Do you want that extra seasoning? Make sure it's recorded on the menu, or it doesn't exist. And that sums up our quick boot camp of LiveTV's main players. What you think, Floof? You feel like you got a good grasp of the stuff covered in this video? Let this information marinate in your brain until next time. If this video tickles your fancy, remember to like and subscribe with the bell. So I know that so I know that you know that you know that you want to know more so I know that you know that you know that you want to know more about what you don't know when you're not really fine. So I know that you know that you want to know more about what you don't know, you know? If you're new to the wonderful and fascinating world of live duty, feel free to ask any questions below and I'll try and help to the best of my ability. If you're experienced with Live 2D, please leave a like and a comment with your best tip for newbies. One like equals one booba saved. In a bit to remote accessibility, all my videos will have timestamps and closed captioning. Links will also be included for any subjects mentioned in the series. Thanks for watching!